We're here with Muscular Development Magazine's Ron Harris. How are you doing today, Ron? Doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me. Arnold Classic Predictions. I mean, a lot of people in the industry, a very different show, but uh, we still have four divisions and over $400,000 in prize money that's up for grabs. But the, the question on everybody's mind is the men's open bodybuilding. Who are we looking at as some of the top people in, in the show that you think are going to be uh, close to winning this one? So my pick for the past month or so has been William Bonac, 100%. Uh, what's that say? Punch up for a big review. Yeah, just yeah William, screen, William is, sure. he's a two time champ. He's an Olympia runner up. Um, it was his show to win or lose. And now, you know, it has not been 100% confirmed that he's not in the show, but all, all signs seem to indicate he's not coming. Travel issues. His coach went on Snapchat earlier. Abdullah Alutabi said he's not coming. Travel issues. I know the Arnold people, they're working very hard to see what can be done. Uh, some strings can be pulled, maybe. He is a professional athlete. He's a defending champion. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that some miracle could happen at the 11th hour and he could get here. Uh, someone pointed out to me that there was a, an Australia pro. It was either the Arnold Australia or maybe it was before it was called the Arnold. It was just the Australian Grand Prix. That years ago, Dexter Jackson had travel issues. This is obviously long before COVID, but Dexter showed up, literally got into the airport two hours before judging and ended up going in and winning the show. So, you know, stranger things have happened. My gut tells me we're, we're not going to have William in the show, unfortunately. So that leaves the field. Everybody else just moved up a spot. There were 11 men in the show. We've already lost. Uh, Rolly Winkler dropped out recently, giving no explanation. Uh, Lionel Baecki from France had travel yeah. issues and uh, Cedric McMillan had an injury. So this would be, uh, we're down now to, if, if William doesn't show up, we're down to 10 men. And so who's going to win? Uh, my gut tells me my, my top pick. Ooh, it's hard, man. It's hard. You know, a lot of people are saying Nick Walker. A lot of people have Nick Walker winning. And I certainly don't, I, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. But Nick has never beaten Steve Kuklo. He's never beaten Sergio Oliva Jr. He's never beaten Ian Valliere. He's never beaten Akim Williams. Not to say that he couldn't, but he never has. He's never faced these guys before. So Nick looked phenomenal at the New York Pro a couple months back. It was at May. Uh, looked phenomenal. He's got so much size. Comes in great condition. I do think he's a work in progress. I don't think he's at his final form yet. He's just turned 27 years old. Yeah, I think in a couple of years, he's going to be deadly. He might be unbeatable in a couple of years, possibly. But right now, I think it's going to be a dogfight for, for this win, a real dogfight. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, so much muscle mass on his frame and incredible conditioning. Uh, I'm looking at the, the, the back from the, the width of the back from the, from the rear. Uh, you know, a few of these from the front, uh, I obviously see very strong, powerful arms, great from the side, great legs and legs and vascularity, et cetera. But yeah. I just think that um, this is a show where a perfect physique like a William Bonac uh, places ahead. And let's not forget that the judging is uh, the, the posing is judged at the Arnold Classic. So I yeah. think that um, when you have uh, people like Sergio Oliva Jr., who won best poser last year in this, um, yeah. You know, these are just different things. Uh, I don't think Nick Walker's known for his posing, but no. obviously he's a freak and he's a, a future top star, no doubt. Um, let's go into that. I mean, speaking of which, um, there's a man that uh, obviously no stranger to Canada, Ian Vellier, kind of mm -hmm. really put, got put on the map. And this is one of the few pros that are at that top level that just continually get better and better and better. Um, yeah. He's running on all cylinders, marketing himself very well on social media in the presence of obviously Chris Bumstead being his brother-in-law doesn't hurt. But this is one of those guys, he has like that Dorian Yates, dry, rugged mass. And he just, it, it, one of these things that is very difficult is a guy of that size to get really peeled, but he's definitely able to do that. And um he showed a lot of confidence, and I, I thought a, a phenomenal um, decision when he decided to do the Texas Pro, even though he was already Olympia qualified. 
I think um, people from your era and my era, they used to do, the pros used to do a lot more shows in the past with the Grand Prix and some of these shows. You look at Milo Sarsev, Dexter Jackson, all these guys, Chris Carmier, Lavroni. Now yeah. the trend is to just get Olympia qualified and then hang up the tights and train and do your social media and, and you know, obviously do your other businesses and that. But uh, Ian came to... Um, came to Texas and uh, defeated Steve Kuklo in his hometown, which really was a convincing win. And it shows me that uh, there is a, a lot of continued future for, uh, for Ian. What are your, what's your thoughts on Ian Bellier for this show? Ian could win this. Ian, uh, one thing that I can, I can depend on this guy to, to show up shredded and dry. He does not ever let you down in that area especially since he's worked, he's been working with Patrick Tour, great coach out of Switzerland. Uh, Ian, you know, I, I, I really believe condition is what put him over uh, for, the, for the win in Texas over Kuklo. Steve is a big man. Steve's got an excellent physique. Ian was just a little sharper. Ian doesn't really have anything physique-wise that Steve doesn't have, yeah, but he brought the condition. And like you said, yeah, look at these pictures, man. It, it, some of these shots, especially when you put them in black and white, you, you get the flashbacks to Dorian Yates. That's right. Just, you don't see a 250 pound guy with that level of detail very often anymore. Um, would I be surprised if Ian wins? Not a, not one minute. I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I think it's going to be the judge. I don't know if it's Steve Weinberger or uh, Tyler, but they're going to have their hands full. They're going to have to run these guys through the mill trying to figure out a winner here. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And this is uh, filmed in Columbus, Ohio. We all recognize that gym. The uh, the world gym, I think it is the old worlds. Um, yeah, we have the one downtown. But uh, okay, so that uh, that we're obviously on the same page now. Steve Kuklo, the mm. probably the largest man in the show, a bit taller than obviously some of the others that are here. But yeah. um, if he's able to come down lighter, lighter than he was in Texas, because he was he outsized Valier, but he just was not as sharp. But from what I understand, he's taken his body weight down closer to what he should have been at the Texas show because he tried to come in big. And that obviously uh, he did have new, mu new muscle mass, but his conditioning was off. What are your thoughts on Steve Kuklo taking the title? Steve, yeah, I mean, like she was just said, Ian beat him a few weeks ago. Steve's going to be a tighter. There's no doubt in my mind he'll be in better condition. So then it's going to come down to... I see this as Ian, Nick, Akim, and Kuklo just being run through a million comparisons. Steve has got the height. He's the tallest man in this lineup. He's a little, he's about 6'1". He's about 285 pounds. Maybe he's lighter. Maybe he came down under 280 for this. But uh, so, many, so many things in his favor, those super wide, round shoulders, tight waistline, flaring quads. He's just a big, rugged man. Um, uh, he, God, this is going to be so tough. I, until they're all sitting next to each other, Scott, this is just, it, it's hard to even speculate. Sergio Oliva is, he's about 275, 280 pounds for this show too. And he's a little shorter. I want to say he's about 5'10", 5'11", maybe. Uh, I think Sergio desperately wants to win this show. Sergio, uh, still a little salty about the last Arnold because he felt he rightfully should have placed ahead of Steve. Uh, he was in fifth and Steve was in fourth. So I'm, I know he wants to beat Steve for sure, but he wants the title, man. This is a, this is a, you know, there's only, there's only a couple names on this list that I, that I don't really see winning and it's no disrespect to them. It's just, there's some heavy hitters in this show. I can't, this go for, I mean, uh, obviously uh, looking at uh, Sergio Oliva, he missed the, I think it was the Chicago pro he was supposed to do. Yeah. And he had talked about doing that and didn't give any reasons why, but this is just, uh, it would be so cool to see Sergio's son win the Arnold Classic with that type of physique. He looks like he's got, I don't know, looking at his Instagram, uh, some new muscle mass from uh, looking at it here. Um, you can really see. Yeah, I mean, all he ever really needed was a little, was more front to back thickness. You know, he had the limbs, he had the arms, the legs, the shoulders, chest was a little flat a couple of years ago, the upper chest, especially back needs to be thicker, a little bit more width. His back is definitely up. His chest is up. 
I'm curious. And as for why he didn't do Chicago, uh, I'm pretty sure it's because it was in Atlanta, Georgia, rather than Chicago, Illinois. He's from Chicago. He grew up there. That's where his dad lived most of his life yep. uh, when he came to the U.S. from Cuba. He wanted to win the Chicago Pro in Chicago in, in a hometown crowd. And unfortunately, due to COVID and everything, two years in a row, the Chicago Pro was held in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's that's probably why he didn't do it. But obviously, the Arnold Classic, very, very meaningful show to him. His father was, a, you know, Arnold's one of Arnold's fiercest rivals during yeah. those years. Uh, and I think that's he wants to carry on his father's legacy. He's his own man. He's very different physique, different personality. But he's still carrying on that that Sergio Oliva three time Mr. Olympia legacy. And it would mean a lot to him to win this. And I know, of course, he wants to win the Mr. Olympia. But man, um, Akeem I, Williams, I, Akeem Williams. Well, can we? I mean, there are some people, uh, Nick Strength and Power, he's he's got this guy first winning the whole show. And yeah. I think he obviously has made tremendous improvements in his ability to peak. He always yeah. had a lot of muscle mass. What are your thoughts on uh, Akeem's chances here? Yeah, it's actually, we, it's, we had a conference call earlier in the week, uh, the muscular development team, and he, he was Steve Blackman's pick to win the show. Wow. That's who Steve thinks. And Steve's been to a million of these shows. He's got oh, a pretty yeah. good eye for yeah. physiques. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Akeem's condition, I believe it was 2017 or 18 Toronto Pro, where I finally saw him start to turn it around. I think he took second to Juan Morel, but finally he had light, he had to go much lighter back then, but it took him to come down from his usual like 270 down to about 250 to nail his condition. And since then, he figured out how to get the size back and hold the condition. Um, he looked really good when he won the Puerto Rico Pro a couple months ago. Uh, it's a couple things about his physique. Really, the only thing about his physique that I have a, a little sticking point with is the back. I, I, I always want to see more back detail out of him and a little bit more drop to the lower lats. You know, people say he needs so-and-so needs more lower lat it's usually that's just where your lats insert you can't build muscle where there is no muscle sure but you know that was always the knock on dennis wolf too that he he, need, he didn't have any lower lat development that his lats were high but i think it actually works out in some people's favor it worked out in dennis's favor and akim in certain shots the front and rear double bicep the v taper is so much more dramatic because of the high lats yeah. than if the lats went down all the way to the hip bone as they do on something like a Bonac that his lats insert right above the hip bone. Yeah. I, I think a Kim in crazy peeled condition. Yeah. Why, why couldn't he win? He was sixth place at the Olympia. There's nobody competing here that beat him at the Olympia last year, except yeah, it would have been Bonac, but uh, he's not in it. So yeah, I mean, Akim definitely a heavy favorite for this. So I'm saying this is going to be a great show because we don't have just one or two guys that are probably going to win. And then some slouches who are, it's going to be a battle for second through fifth. There's a legitimate four or five guys on this list that I think are fully capable of winning the show. It's just incredible to see that, you know, uh, Arnold stepping up and wanting to put this show on still to continue to have the legacy of an Arnold Classic winner every single year. Um, yeah. You know, 2020, I was there covering the show and it was there was no expo. And it, it was a, a really interesting vibe because it kind of brought everybody a little bit closer together because of COVID just having hit and people yeah. kind of been, you know, freaked out over it. And because of the delay and not having us in March or last week of February with the Arnolds this year, many right. people thought it wouldn't happen, but it really is amazing to see. And we've got other classes obviously in there, uh, bikini and um, fitness and uh, men's physique, men's classic physique, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really great. There's four divisions here, a lot of prize money on the line. And uh, on your side at Muscular Development, obviously, High Tech Pharmaceuticals is sponsoring your contest coverage. Phenomenal yeah. guys, Jared Wheat and his crew. I've been down to their manufacturing facility. They just That's do nice. an, an awesome job at doing it. Always have a, a lot of respect for the cutting edge products that they put out. And on our side, we got uh, Mutant sponsoring the, the <laughs> uh, contest coverage that we're doing. So oh, awesome. um, really happy to be uh, working with those guys and uh, helping them uh, get the word out there further. And it's just good that um, companies like High Tech and Mutant are sponsoring the sport and uh, providing uh, contest coverage support so that uh, we can bring fans uh, our perspective. And um, I really, it's great to be able to do something with 
you over at the Muscat Development team because you guys just are the leaders in contest coverage. Um, so uh, really great to uh, collaborate on this. So um, we're not going to hold you to ransom, but what would be a, I would say, top, if you had to say top three, if Bonac is in the show, what is oh. your top three? Oh, if Bonac is in the show? Okay, well, Bonac first, unless, see, that's, if he shows up at the last minute after being on a plane for 12 hours, Ooh. Oh, not the best, not a good situation. He'd be holding, you know, tons of water. So I, if he could get here that late, I don't know if it's even worth it at this point. But I, the William Bonac that I've seen many times would win this show. He's been top five in the Olympia multiple times. He's won this twice. So I would have him first. Oh, boy, second place. Mm. Uh, probably go with Akim second. Interesting. I'm going to make all the young guys out there happy. I'll give Nick Walker the next spot. How's that, guys? Very good. I'll tell you what, Nick <laughs> Walker fans, they're like the big Rami and Hadi Chupan fans. They're so fiercely loyal to their guy. And I'm happy because for a while I said, man, I wish the American body, some of these American bodybuilders had fans like Rami and Hadi. Because they, they're just like rabid. They love their guy. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's a bold prediction. But Nick looks pretty damn good. Uh, but, you know, I, Sergio, Kuklo, Ian, any of those guys could, could, could be right after Bonac. And taking Bonac out of the equation, I think we could see any one of those guys win. It's, it's impossible to say. We get, they're, they're all so evenly matched. They're all great, great champions. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to who really brings it Saturday morning for the judging, who really, who peaked perfectly. We'll see. We'll see. Hakeem definitely has got the mass and he's got a V taper. Um, I hope his conditioning is there because you know that Nick Walker is going to be conditioned, but I don't know if he's going to have the same polish or stage presence, ability to display that muscle. Um, mm. Obviously from the front, phenomenal uh, poses we've seen on Instagram. Uh, he's got so much muscle and a lot of muscle maturity for a young guy. Yeah. Kuklo, I think, has all the parts uh, if he could just nail the conditioning and, and do something absolutely freaky like what Roden had done in 2018, where if he were to just come in so, so shredded that no one has ever seen Kuklo at this level in this particular lineup, he might do great because he's got symmetry and he's got size. Whereas without Bonac in the lineup, it's going to be a mass contest. And yeah. whereas Bonac's got that polish that I think if he is here, he's got like a Dexter physique. It's almost untouchable in each round. Mm. Um, whereas without him, I think it's going to be a different judging outcome simply because they're all evenly matched and they're all massive on the mass right. side. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to only route for root for Ian Valliere only because of two pro shows this season in a row winning them. He seems to be back to back getting more and more and more and more thinner skin. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think he's just going to have that polish that a Nick Walker and balance that he necessarily hasn't developed yet simply mm. because he hasn't been, uh, fine-tuning the smaller muscle groups, the tie-ins, uh, you know, rhomboids, all the little things that uh, more of a, con uh, a seasoned veteran uh, would have. Uh, yeah. But anyway, and I got, I'm Canadian, obviously got a root for the oh, I think I, I figured it was a bias, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, okay, listen, Ron, thank you so much for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. And Muscular Development, thank you very much for uh, lending us the guru of contest coverage. How many years have you been covering the Arnolds? That's another trivia. Uh, the first Arnold I went to was 1995 when we were, I was with the ESPN, a company called American Sports Network, and we did the one hour event special for it. Uh, and Mike Francois won it, and it was his birthday. That's right. He went on That's his birthday. Right. And the expo was, it was like a, in a basement underneath the veterans, and there were about 30 or 40 little booths you know, t-shirts, a couple supplement companies, I think like one equipment manufacturer, that was it. It's, it's been fun to watch the show grow into, and back then it was just men's and women's bodybuilding. There was nothing else. There was no, there were no others, you know, now they typically they would have 
like 40 different sports going on, you know, uh, totally unrelated to bodybuilding, all these divisions. So yeah, man, it's been a wild ride watching, watching this thing develop and grow and evolve. What's the vibe like in uh, like, what's the feeling like from what you've done? You just landed, you got in the lobby. Was it the usual you at the Hilton and everybody's kind of in the lobby or everybody's on the second? Yeah, I imagine tomorrow's probably going to be a little more lively. Uh, I ran to Logan Franklin quickly, Milos, who's going to be working with the, with me with the MD coverage, yep, yep. Uh, Milos and his wife. And I ran to Ian and Melissa. Nice. And nice. that was it. Yeah, I was just you know going up to my room, so... <laughs> Cool. But yeah, You're I imagine Dorian Yates, right? Like Dorian Yates, just up the elevator, past the lobby, into the hotel room. That's me, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, listen, Ron Harris, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it as always.